So what is the Google Classroom then? This is for my department. Really, it empowers us to create a collaborative online learning environment. Um, again, if a learner is absent, this helps a lot because they can just go online. It uses a little bit of data and they can then work from home if they're absent or yeah. Then um, also, what is what do I expect from my department and the learners that I work with? I normally tell them that there needs to be clear expectations. It's not just something that I post online. There's a purpose for what I post online. It's not just me keeping myself busy and posting things. Um, I think all of us have enough work to do, so we don't necessarily have time to just post things online. Um, it's also, it helps a lot to organize work for learners and for colleagues that it helps with if there's a certain topic that we didn't complete and, or learners struggled with, then we know that that is what we focus on and then it organizes it as we go on on the Google Drive. <clears throat> okay, then also something that we'll talk about a bit today is how we use Google Forms. You will see that hopefully people can participate in this where you're gonna help me get some data from you guys as well, where I use Google Forms to maybe get some information from my learners or from people that I work with, just to check in with them, because again, we do not have time to always have a meeting and no one wants to sit in a meeting. So then you can just um, send them a link and then they can complete the form for you. And then, like I said, this encourages collaboration between not just students and learner, uh, students and teachers, but also between teachers. And it can also help with intervention. Yeah, so that is what um, I use a lot. You'll see when I go to my Google Classrooms, you'll see that I actually have an intervention classroom. So if there's a teacher that has an intervention session, they can log on on there and then there's work for the learners to complete. And then I can keep track on the learners that sign in as well. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Then um, the benefits, again, a lot of repetition happening on what I have been saying already. You can assign your assignments on here. So learners know exactly when certain assignments are due. Main thing here is that uh, the teachers shouldn't think that the assignments are posted and you don't have to do anything any further. You are still liable, if that's the right word, to do the assign the assessment. So learners can post their work, but you can then still have your assessment, your rubric or whatever, and then do that, but without the paperwork. So there's a lot less paperwork from there. Um, also, there's a way of communicating with your learners. So there's a classroom stream. We'll get to that again, where I'll show you exactly what that means. And again, it is very accessible. So learners, if they don't have a computer at home, maybe they just have a cell phone, they can just log on with their Google account or the school account, and then they can go on there and do the assignment or, com or complete the quiz or so forth. Then if, for example, we have a Kami lab at our school, so learners have a Kami period once a week where they can go to Kami and then they can work in that period. So that means they can either then complete the, the work on the classroom or they can search for information that they need. Okay, and then for teacher's side is it, it streamlines a bit of your workflow as well, where you can post certain due dates for certain assignments on there and learners know that so it's this it's, there's not a miscommunication or oh ma'am i didn't know that this needs to be done it's on the classroom they know exactly what to do so there's no excuses so that that helps me a lot it covers me a lot if learners tell me i didn't know then i just tell them it was on the google classroom not my problem okay um also with the real-time collaboration um you'll see that when we get to the practical part of it that you everything that you post is going on your Google Drive. So when there's a problem or a teacher maybe didn't know what was going on, they can just go to that Google Drive and everything will be shared there for them as well. So that helps with the communication as well. All students, all teachers know exactly what has to be done because everything is posted on the Google Classroom. And then that also helps with the feedback. If we need proof for the department or for your principal or whatever, you can then go on your Google Classroom and see 
who has been engaging with you on the Google Classroom. And then you can also state there, or you can follow up why learners have not been um, talking or taking part of in your Google Classroom. Okay, and then that is the introduction done. So um, how, we, how do we do this then? This is the fun part, this is the nice part. And I hope that I get everything that you can do on here. But because it's an introduction, I will start with the basics. So you can then, if you look at your home screen, this is my home screen, you will go onto the waffle, right? There is the little waffle there with the very big hand on my screen. You can click on it. And when you scroll down, you some people have it as an option there. So you will see that I don't. Right. So that is just to show you a different way of going onto your Google Classroom. So you can also search it there on top. You can just say Google Classroom. And then it pops up with this. So you have to be signed in with your Google account or your school account for many people. So for again, for the purpose of this, I'll be just signing in. It wants to work. There we go. Okay, there we go. So then you are signed in. If you have not been signed in with your account, then you would have the option where you have to type in your password. But because I'm already signed in with my Google Classroom, uh, Google account, I don't have to do the sign in again. So then you will get to this screen. If you do not have any classes, it will just be a blank screen where it says start sharing your screen or start with classrooms or something like that. But this is all the classrooms that I have created or that I'm taking part in. So that is just for 2024. So here, like I said before, this is my intervention classes. So just to quickly show you before we get to the nice part, this is then where I post work for the learners that go to intervention classes. So there was a little booklet that I did because there were grade nine learners that was absent and they had to go to the intervention classes. So they would just click on it and then they could complete the work that's in there. And then I also had the next intervention class. There was people from FILA, so my grade 12s. There was some absenteeism there. So they had to go in and complete the assignment. But that is just a quick, quick, oh, quick way of showing you where to go. Okay. Then, so how do we start a Google Classroom? This is very fun and very nice. And my department enjoy this extremely when I show them how to do it. Um, so when you want to start a, or when you want a new classroom, you will go to the little plus sign on top. It will then give you the option to say, or it says create or join class. So when you click on it, obviously you don't have a code just yet and you are creating the classroom for your learners. Here you can then give your classroom a name so you'll see with my classes, I have the code and then the grade and then the year. But for now, I'll just quickly have Google um, Classroom intro. So that is the oh, intro. Um, that is the name of my class. Like you can see, it says that if that is a requirement, all the other sections are not required. So you can either leave that open if you want to, or you can fill in, let's say this is a section. So this is M. This is the training subject is training like you see there and then the room if you want to add maybe they go to cami or they go to your classroom so for my case for example i will put in my classroom and that is ee7 and then as easy as that you just say create and then if the internet is working it is supposed to be magic there we go so there's the magic happening um, there you will see all oh, there's four types of little pointers on top. So you have the stream, we'll talk about that now. You have the classwork, you have the people and you have the grading. Like I said before, the grading still needs to be done by the teacher. There's no um, way of you just ch children just posting things and you just sitting back and everything is done for you. You still need to do the formative assessment. Okay. Um, also, a nice feature on this home screen is the Meet. We'll talk about that just now. But now, how do people join your classroom? 
they have to have the code to go on here. So you are going to share this code with your learners. There are a few options on how you can do that. You can either just show it on the board for them. So maybe you have a projector and you can just project this code to them. If they do not have their phones with them, um, you can just tell them, OK, you need to have this code. Um, you can also send this code to their parents. So you can send, you can copy the invite link there and then email that to them so that the parents can also sign up and see what is being posted on here. Um, so that is one option. If a learner then has their phone with them, they will go on the Google, you, they will go to Google um, Classroom and they will then join the class with this code. So that is the code that they have. Again, if they have their cell phones or they have their devices with them when you are doing this, then it's easy. It's like we're doing it now. They just go have the code, click in it, and there we go. If you want to maybe send it to them, then you can see there that there are ways that you can send it to them as well. So you can copy the link or you can um, copy the classroom code, send it via email, via SMS, whatever. Um, communication system your school has, you if you have, or you can then send that to your learners. So that is how the code works. Okay, so just to quickly show you another way of how you can add learners is you can click on people. So there is people. And then you will see that everyone in your class will be a t uh, will be a student. So if you want to maybe add a different teacher. So for example, I want to add or I can just in show you here. These are all my colleagues that work in my department. So I can then click on it and the invite will be sent to them. So for example, if I want to make Melissa a teacher, I can then just click on her information and then invite her. And then there is the moment that she then says yes okay she confirms it then it will be a normal account like mine on top not a faded one like the one at the bottom so then there are all the students like you guys have joined the classroom thank you very much um all your students will then also show up there if a student has problems maybe i don't know there's a problem you can also add them manually here by the little person adder where it says invite students you can just click on it and then if you have the information you can just then add them there again you will see there's the invite link where you can copy and just paste it in an email or paste it in a maybe you have a whatsapp with them then you can just tell them please join here is the link so but it's just easier when they have the code because again their children they're not going to go through all of this nonsense okay but then there's your people added okay that is how you then add a student and add a teacher okay when you go to your stream back to your stream you can then you'll see here it says announce something to your class so anything if you have maybe you were absent and you had some information that you had to share with them you can then click on the little announcement section there and say whatever you want to say so i'll be saying hi everyone thanks oh, thanks for joining okay and then you can also, if you want to, maybe there was a little um, animated video you wanted to make or you want to add um, a PDF or any type of information for them to say thank you. You can then add it here at the bottom. So, for example, if I want to add a YouTube video, I can just click on the YouTube video there. It's going to give me. Um, so I can search, let's say I want to listen to a song, then I can click in the replay. I want to show you this guy, Alexander. And then I can give this little link on there. I'll add the video and then I can post this announcement. What can happen with the posting as well? You can click on the little drop down there. It's going to give you options. So I can either post it automatically now so that everyone can see it at this moment, or I can schedule a post. So this is a very cool feature. They'd say you have some time, you have a few periods and you don't have invigilation, then you can schedule this announcement to them so that it can happen either tomorrow. Maybe you're only absent tomorrow or 
um, you only need the learners to have this information on Friday, then you can schedule it. And then you can also save this. So if you don't want to immediately announce this and you're not sure when the schedule or when it needs to go out, you can then also save it and come back to it later. So again, for the purpose of this exercise, I'll just post it now. And then when you click on it, you will be able to see this Australian idol sing his song. OK, so that is then the announcement that I made. You can also then click on the three little dots here on the side. When you click on it, you can edit it. So maybe there was a spelling mistake or you wanted to make something different. Then you can just change whatever you want and save it again. Or you have maybe want to take out the video and paste, um, post something else. Then you can also just do it here. You'll be able to remove it um, or yeah, you can change anything you want and then just say save. Okay, and then that is how um, your announcements to your classroom will be. So learners can then also, let's say you want to maybe someone said something on you. If you allow that, then you can just add a class comment. So that is how the main thing is. So when you go on it, the people that is part of the classroom, you can maybe just check if you can add a classroom comment there because I haven't changed any settings. So maybe just have a reply or an emoji or whatever, just there in the classroom comments. And then here I can then also either delete her or I'm, I'll mute her, but okay, but not for today's purpose. So that is then how the stream will look. So a stream is almost like a Facebook page where you can communicate with them, you can post things and they can either interact with you or you can switch it off. So how do I switch it off? If I don't want learners to communicate with me, I go to the little gear there on top where it says class settings. So the class settings, you just click on it. And here you can also change all the information. So maybe you weren't happy or there was information that you wanted to change. You can then edit it in, on here at the classroom details. The general information is just, again, the codes. So there's so many options and so many different ways that you can share this with your learners. Then one very nice feature that I use a lot is the streaming. I don't want all my students to comment every time. So maybe you just want your students to get information. That is normally what we use our classrooms for in the beginning. Then you can just change this setting. You can click on it and it's going to give you three different options. So either your students can post and comment that I would suggest do not put that on because learners post very inappropriate things on there if they have the opportunity to do so. Um, but if you want them to maybe just comment or say or if there's questions, then that is a nice option, the second one. But if only you as a teacher want to post and comment, then I would suggest use the one at the bottom. Again, that just helps with, yeah, this is still an academic platform. It is not their Facebook page or the Instagram page. So that helps a lot with the streaming. Then um, classroom, classroom on the stream, that is just how it is shown. So there again, you can click on it and then decide how you want your information to be shown. So I normally do the condensed one. Okay, then with the show deleted items. So like I said before, when you have your Google Classroom and you maybe deleted something because it wasn't what you wanted to post, then you can, you can decide, do you want to enable people to be able to see it? Yes or no? That is what you will do there. That is just the slider there. And then the examples here of the garden summaries, you can also just enable or it just says, do you want to add summaries to it or you don't? So that is up to you. You can just read that if you want to, but I normally just say no, leave it out there. Okay, then another very nice feature that you can have when you are absent, for example. So in our case at our school, in this term, we had three teachers um that broke their legs it just happened and so it doesn't mean that they are unable to teach it just they have a problem they can't drive so this was a nice little thing that we had is that they had a meet link so when a learner then comes to the class the teacher that had invigilation they will click on this meet link 
and then it's the same as a Teams meeting. So they can go on there, the teacher can communicate with the learners, the learners can communicate with the teacher. So it's she's in the classroom, but she's not in the classroom, if that makes sense. So that is then also, if you want your, your students to see that, that then you can just enable it there. But if you don't want them to see anything like that, then you can just um, switch it off. Okay, the grading, we'll talk about the grading later on, but this is also um, just a platform where you can save your classroom settings. So the grade calculations, again, like I said before, this is not a platform where you upload, upload your learner's work and you sit back and everything is done for you. You still need to be doing the physical marking of the sheets that they then provide to you. Um, so it is not, Unfortunately, it is not a magic wand that you can just wave and everything is done for you. OK, so with the overall grade calculation, you must also see that there are some options there. So um, this is dependent on your type of um, subject that you have and the type of topics that you want to cover. So here um, I normally use the non overall grading. It's just easier because you can change it like you want to. So that is normally the one that I choose. Um, that is the total points is if you want to go and have a look at it, I can click on there and then it tells you all the types of grading that it does. So there's with the rubric, there's all kinds of things. Um, I'm not going to bore you with all of that. I think all of us can read. Um, and like I said, this is not um, taking away our manual marking. So, yeah, that is then what we do at the grading. Um, you can also add a different grading category there if you want to. But again, this is an introduction, so that is not the main focus for now. Okay, and then when you're done with all of this, you are just going to click on save. And there you go. So now you have posted. Thank you for everyone that has commented on the post. So how do I now make this... A classroom when my learners is actually posting work or giving out um, information to me um, how are we going to do this so then we click on classroom so when we go to classroom here is where you then will be able to assign work to your learners so you can then click on create and here's all the different things that you can then post for the for your learners what is very nice again if you're absent for example, you have training or you have um, you're not available for the day of school and you know that your learners is going in our case, they, I know that they're going to Kami. So I know that they will be able to have a computer screen or they'll have their phone with them and they will be able to do this assignment. Then I can have them do this assignment and I can post it on there with a due date. Remember, that they must always be a due date. So again, for today, I, they, I'm going to have a quiz assignment. So here, what is very nice is that you can use Google Forms. And with the Google Forms, um, you can post it. And it's sometimes if you have um, worked, at, worked it out for them, then it's automatically marked for you. If you have a little informal test that you just want to find out um, your learners do they know about Philosophical, um, the section that you have read, then you will post them a little quiz on that. So if you, for today, I'm going to show you just how to um, make an, um, an assignment. So again, I'm just going to say the stress levels, because I think that's what we have been dealing with a lot. So, and then the instructions, I'm just going to say, please complete. the quiz below. Okay, and then I can also attach information at the bottom. So I can attach something from my Google Drive. I can attach a, Google, um, a YouTube video. So again, with the Afrikaans, I can maybe let them play a song or listen to a song on YouTube and then have some questions based on what they have learned. Or you can even have it if in history, I know one of my colleagues, when they have a history cami period, he would post a video about World War II or um, 
1994, he will post a video and then he would say, what did you learn from this video? And then learners had to complete a little quiz on there or write an essay about it. So then this is how he will then post it from there. So again, for today, I'm just going to go and have a blank form. I'm going to show you how to do this. And here I can then make up my questions. So I can name this. So this is totally different thing. I'm just going to quickly show you how to do it. Um, and then I can also name it here, give the form description and have my question there. And then when I'm done with this, I can then send this out to learners. So there I'll go with the sending. How do I send it? I can send it via the information that is given. Let me just do this. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. So I don't know why it's doing it this now, but let's say I now have a video again. So I'll take the same one that I posted before. Ripley Alexander. I'll take this one again. I'll add it there on top. And just because it doesn't want to give me the quiz now, I can change this and I can say, um, please listen to this song and complete the questions below. And then I can have my questions there. Um, what's his name? Um, what song is he singing? Did you like the song? Okay. So this is then the instructions that you have for your learners. If you have a quiz, then it's a bit easier because then learners can just click on the quiz and they can complete the quiz from there. Um, so that is the one way that you can do it. Then on the other side of the same screen, you can then see that all students if that's in this classroom. So I'm just assigning it to this one classroom. If you have, for example, you have a 12A, 12B, 12C, 12 whatever, then you can just click on every classroom that you want this quiz to be posted on. So it's not that you have to go to each classroom and then copy and paste. You can actually just click on this drop down here at the bottom on the side and then click where do you want to post this. So that is a very nice option. You're not doing double work. Everyone is getting the same information. Um, again, all students, if you don't want all of your students to complete this, then you just unclick the ones you don't want them to complete. So sometimes um, I do this if I have um, intervention classes as well. So learners that really struggle with information, I will unclick tick all my stronger students and only let my weaker students then complete this assignment. So that is just a nice little option there as well. Um, the same with some students you want to maybe improve. So then you can only click on the ones that you want to maybe have this specific information and then you can post it from there. If you want to have a little quiz point to this, this is normally what I do with my learners as well. Um, if you have 100 points at the end of two weeks, then you get rewarded. So you get either I have marshmallows or have little lollipops. So then learners also work for the points. So the points is not taking away the actual assessment. So this is just for you to encourage your learners to actually engage with you and do their part as well. So I will normally have like a little 10 point um, quiz with them. And that is then posted on three or four days, five days. It depends on how many times I see them. So normally this is homework for me, for my classes. I'll post the assignment on there, not all the time, but for my younger learners, I will have like a weekly session. And then at the end of the term, if you have 50 points or whatever, then you get your reward. So that is just a nice way of engaging with your learners. What's important that, um, I've talked about with my colleagues as well is the due date. Learners needs to know that it is not just the teacher posting things just for the sake of posting things. Okay. 
there needs to be a due date for the assignments as well. And what's nice with the due date, if a learner does not, um, if a learner does not the change or um, assign, do the assignment, you will see that next to their name, it will say missing, meaning that you can keep track also with who did not complete the work, who did not um, do this assignment so that you also have proof that that learner is not doing his or her part. So again, you can do the due date and time. So for today we have our due date for tomorrow. And then also the time is optional. I normally don't add a time because learners will push limits and they will post very late at night. So I'll just say it the, the 29th of February. That is fine by me because we know that we're not going to actually, actually look at it until the next day. If you know that that is due on the Friday. But if you want to, you can click on it and then add the time there. I hope that makes sense. Is there any questions? Melissa? No questions yet. No questions yet. Thank you, Bradley. OK, um, with the topic, you can then also create topics if you want to. So in this case, I might have the one about listening comprehension. So then that will be my topic for this specific assignment. Okay, that is then, and then when you're done with all of this, everything is on there, then you can assign. Okay, so I'm going to quickly assign it. So then this is what it looks like. Oh, I needed to change this. I can edit it quickly because we changed it to the stress level one. Oh. So there you can edit it. So you can just say, listening test and save and then there you will see that it changed its name to from the stress levels to listening test and then all my students that was in my classroom they are assigned this and no one has turned it in so no one oh i needed to change this as well let me just quickly change this sorry colleagues i don't know why it did that. Okay, so then if a student then turns in their work, so they then completed this, they will be turn said turned in. But no one has completed it, so therefore it only says assigned and zero turn ins. Okay, everything is still fine. Then um, also when you post this on your Google Classroom, it also goes to your Google Calendar. So when you click on the Google Calendar there on top, you will see, yes, there you will see. So this is our Google Classroom, our Google Calendar. And all my, normally all my Afrikaans, you will see there is on the purple. So what's nice with this is all our staff members have access to the Google Calendar. And they can then have a look, okay, um, Afrikaans is writing paper two on those four days or task two on those four days. Therefore, I cannot add too many other work from there. And they can't take my Afrikaans lessons for uh, maybe someone wants to come and talk to them. So this is also very effective when um, you do planning and there's no extra ones. So you'll see here with March, for example, my learners, has been doing um, task three for Afrikaans on Monday. Um, that was their last day to complete. So therefore my students are open for the rest of the week to have a different lesson. Maybe a teacher have to catch up or I can just have my normal lesson, but the assessment lesson was on this and it was due on this. So learners can also then keep track that they can't be absent because that or if they're absent, they need to bring the information before that so that the, that the teacher can also just keep track of what is going on. So this is a very nice little add on when you have that. So just to show you here at the bottom, you will see here. I don't know if you'll be able to see. Let me maybe just make it a bit bigger. So here at the bottom, you will see assignment listening test. And then when you click on it, there's all the information that I posted on the Google Classroom. 
So on the um, Google Calendar, so everyone has access to this and then they can also see what is required from them. And from here, you can also edit the event so you can change it, you can delete it, or you can email this to maybe their parents or if they're not in the Google Classroom, they can you can just also send it to them. You have other options as well where you have to copy it. So maybe you want to copy it to a different classroom, then you can also do it on here. I hope that makes sense, colleagues. That is then your Google Classroom. Una, just one question here in the chat. Yes. Can parents join the classroom as a parent? So they also have access to the classes, but without being able to complete any of the assignments. Um, I would remember when you join, when you join it, so the teacher can have a little look at it and you can immediately go and check who is in your class and who is not in your class. So you will then see that that person might not be a teacher, not a student. So then you can just give them special permission, if that makes sense. So, and for example, you can say they mute, you can mute the person so that they, they can't engage with you, but you they can still see what's being posted. I hope that answers the question. Do I need to re-explain something? Is that okay? That's fine, Kune, thank you. Uh, okay, so that is then um, what you will be able to do or how you will be able to engage with people. Also, another very nice feature is the one where everything is saved to a drive. So this is next to the calendar. You will find the classroom drive folder there. So when you click on it, all the information that you posted will be on here. Okay, I don't know why this thing is there. Okay, but there was my listening test. Right, I posted on the on the stream. So when you click on it, it opens up the information as well. So you can then also see what the responses were. So when you click on it, she will then all the information the student has then um, gave you will be on the worksheet here. So that is a very nice, very very convenient feature to use as well. So. Everything is posted, everything you have evidence. So if anyone tells you, I don't have, where's your evidence? Where's your evidence? Here's your evidence. You have it with you. Okay, so that is then the Google um, Classroom folder. With this, I also just wanted to show you um, what a, less, a full classroom looks, looks like. So for example, when I go to my grade 12 classroom, Again, if the internet wants to work, that is, this is what my classroom looks like. So what's very nice as well, you can change the top. I'll show you how to do that just now. I completely forgot about it now, but I'll show you how to customize your classrooms as well. So here you can see that my colleague, um, Ms. Swanepoel, she then also posted to her grade 12, so that's every, everyone is on this same classroom. She said, please make sure that you have your books with you um, because we discussed it. So it's just like a kind reminder. Hi guys, just make sure you know you have homework and it needs to be done by Monday. So you can post that. And then you can also see that I posted the exam work for them and I have my four assignments for the term. Okay, so I posted it on the 15th of January, but every time, um, let me go to classroom, there it says that it was posted on that day and these are my due dates. So the first one was we did it on the 31st of January, the second one we did on the 16th of Feb, and then the third one we did on the 23, 23rd of Feb. And then the fourth one is not done yet because that is now in our, so this needs to be completed because we do not have our time table set out just yet. So learners are not sure when are they finishing task four. But this is just also very nice. Like I said before, it shows up on your calendar and when you click on it, you can see that it has been assigned, but obviously the learners have not written this task, so no one has turned it in just yet. Okay, so that is just how the functional um, classroom looks like. 
Just so that you, I'll quickly scroll through there and maybe scroll through the grade nine one where there's some some information that I've posted for them. So here, what um, I posted is I posted the planner for the term. So um, especially with my grade nines, they are still a bit young, so they get confused. So I tell them this is what we will be doing in week one. This is what we'll be doing in week two, and they have an exactly exactly this on the calendar on the classroom as well. So they will be able to see. Okay, I wasn't there in week three. Maybe I was sick. Maybe I went for an operation. This is what my fellow learners did and this is what i need to be um, doing as well so the blue ones then is just the assessments so that you just know what is going on there and then there in week eight we will then be writing our test so they will know exactly what is on there and then also it says to them you're doing a, a speech an essay and you will be writing tests this is what will be on your test so there's no excuse of this attitude that's among the learners that I didn't know, I didn't know. Everything is posted there for you. If you are not on the Google Classroom, you need to be on there. That is also what I say to them all the time. You need to be on there. You know this is what is, is expected from you. Um, it does not take a lot of data, so there's no excuse about, oh, I didn't have data. If you come to school, you have data, you're on the, on the network. So there's no excuse for people saying that they did not know what was going on. Okay, so those are just certain things that I posted for them. Like I said, there was a word. I also posted a PDF for them. So I normally post the PDF just so that they can not edit on it. That just makes it easier. Um, yeah, so that is just what you can post. You can then also post the links like I said before. So that is how a functional one will look. There's the classroom. There's the the people that is working with me, there's my co-teachers, there's all my students that's on there. So I can go check, okay, this student is not a student, it's a teacher, then I can, uh, a parent, then I can just edit the rights that person have. So that is just all the learners in my class. And then the grading, like I said before, it is not replacing anything, it's not replacing your school system, it is just to keep track. So again, um, my learners, for example, they completed the, the reading already. That was task one. So I can actually put in the oh, your little spring walkie. She got 18 out of 20 and I can keep track. And then she can also know, oh, OK, I got 20 if I decide to post that. I normally do not um, post it on here because then parents get all edgy and things. But if you decide to have the grading done, then you are more than welcome to add that to there. OK, so that is then how the stream looks. Just so that we can quickly go back to the Google Classroom intro that I spoke about before, you can customize your whole because who doesn't want to customize their work, really? So I would customize this according to what it is. So Afrikaans, for example, my grade 12s, hopefully they are finding their way. So therefore I will have the finding their way picture on top. Um, grade 11s, they are, there's a goal in the story that they talk about, or they're reading, there's a goal running. So therefore the running shoes. My grade 10s, for example, they have this magical world that they are going through. So that is the globe. So because we are adults, <laughs> I want to show you that you can also change your colors. So who doesn't like a nice color? No one wants to live with white and black all the time. It's very nice to have some color. So I'm going to add the orange and then you can decide. Do you want to add a photo? So there's some default photos on here. That you can add. Um, so it depends on your subject as well. So if we have sports, there's some sporty pictures that you can choose. Um, I think we need to go to a swimming pool because of the heat. And then you can se say select class theme. And this can, you, you can change it any way you want. So if you don't like the blue, you can change it to pink or purple or orange or whatever. But the picture then will stay exactly the same. So let's say we don't like the blue, we want orange. The theme will then change to orange, but the picture will stay blue. And then you just save 
and then you can see that everything that I posted or everything that's on your stream is then orange, but the picture is still blue. Okay, so you'll see on the side here, it says all the classes that you are teaching at the moment. So for my reference, I just put the year there so that I know, um, yeah, I, that I know that that is for that specific year. But when you move down, you can also go to your archive classes. I'll show you now how to archive a, a, um, a class. But this is all my classes from previous years. So what is very nice from an archive class, you can still see all the information, but no one can post in there. So if I go, let's go to grade 12 from last year. There it says on top that the class is archived. So I can restore it if I want to, if I want to make this a working environment again but if not it is just what i posted so the links are still there all the information everything is still there um, when you go to the google drive everything that i've posted is on there it is still very available for me to use and for the people who is on this classroom but they cannot um submit any work so they won't be they won't have classwork anymore nothing can be changed from here so you can still keep track with it, um, but nothing can, you can do nothing with it, except if you restore this class. So there's then people, all the people that was, there was all my learners, everything is still there, um, but it's archived. So we cannot communicate with one another. We cannot do anything with one another because it is, it's just there. It's like a treasure little place for us. All your resources is still in your drive like normal. So for, I don't, I, I think that might be the question. So all my resources is still in my drive. There's all my resources that I use um, and my shared drive. Everything is in there in my little folder. It's everything is still there. But then all the things that you post on the Google Classroom is in its own little folder. So it's already organized for you when you go on there. And it doesn't take space from there because it's a separate, it's still the same account, but it's in a separate little place, if that makes sense. I teach grade five, they don't have Gmail accounts. What challenges could I face using their parent Gmail accounts? Um, that's the same thing I have with my grade nines because a lot of our parents say that grade nines are too young to have a phone. So what I normally do with them is I give access to the parent, but then I will just here when I have the settings, I will just change the engagement that I do not have to, I don't want to say do not have to communicate with them, but you know, when you give parents um, an opportunity to speak, they will speak. So I will then just switch this off where only the teacher can post and comment on certain things. That is, that's normally what I do with my grade nines because I know I have exactly the same problem. And I don't like um, giving my telephone number because they call or they, they bother you a lot. So um, I just tell them, this is the classroom code, go on the classroom code. Everything that you need to know is on the Google classroom. The planning's on there. Everything that you need to know is on there. And if there's really a big problem, I'll post my information as an email um, on the Google Classroom. I will then tell them, um, talk to me during this and this, or I'm available during these times. I will also post that on my Google Classroom. But normally in the beginning of the year, I will send out an email to the parents or I'll ask my learners in class, please give me your parents' email address. I just want to communicate with them. And then I'll send out the Google Classroom links with the, for them and I'll tell them, this is the information that will be shared and this is, I don't want to say it's expected from you, but I'm not going to be there to communicate the whole time with you. So I post the information. You also need to re take responsibility for your child. Um, yeah, because I think teachers do a lot already, so we can't expect more from us. I think it's also um, I see here Mr. Bond says that he teaches grade fives. It's also difficult when it comes to um, sharing information like the Poppy Act and all of those things. Yeah. So a good thing for you to do, sir, is to just reach out to your e-learning advisor. 
um, or just do some more research on the the Poppy Act because I know from a certain age some learners, depending on the grade, they're not allowed to even have some kind of account like this unless it's managed through the school. Yeah. So um, that is also another area of concern. I think that's something that you can bring up with your e-learning advisor. I know you are a transformation agent, so I know that you'd be able to have that communication with your e-learning advisor. They'd be able to give you more clear advice on that as yeah. well. And every school is different. So yeah. your school might have a different policy to um, Cornet's school or to anybody else's school. And also a good thing to have policies <laughs> for things like this so that yeah. you you cover yourself and you cover your learners and you cover your parents at the end of the day. Yes, totally agree with you, Melissa. Yeah, always a good idea to do that. Yeah. You can use Google Sites in conjunction with Google Classroom. You can use Google Classroom in conjunction with Google Sites. There's merits to both of them. Um, what do you think, Kone? Yeah, totally. I I don't think I will be able to teach without Google at the moment. Um, I'm so used to everything and my learners is so used to submitting things online and doing assessments online, doing the quizzes online. So it's really becoming, or it made our lives so much easier. So thanks to COVID, there were certain things that was good as well. So it was a frustration in the beginning, but it is a lot nicer now. Cons? They both have their pros and cons? Yeah. Um, for example, one of our other transformation agents at his school, he had just uses a Google site. Um, but yeah. then he records his marks and everything in Google Classroom. So he uses sites as a way to, here's my information, go find it, super easy, term one, lesson yeah. one, whatever. And yeah. then when they complete their assignments, they have a link to go to Google Classroom. Yes. So you can use them together. Yeah, yeah you can use them together. Perfect. So the one is for resources and making things beautiful and exciting and wonderful. And the other is for completing the assignments. Yeah. 